So right away, the Chemtron is what we use to caulk underneath the track. Those are concrete pins and the green tabs for the 351, the Hilti DX351, the shotgun. That's what I'm using to fasten the steel stud to the concrete on the, the floor there. Okay, so the Hilti DX351 is just the gun that I have. There's many different types of guns. There's ram sets and all that. Um, just make sure you have the right fasteners that you want concrete pins basically is what we call them right and as far as the strength goes the we used kind of the lowest strength uh, the green tabs are i think the lowest strength uh, and then above that there's yellow and then red type things so uh, you can use yellow for steel but i actually use the greens for absolutely everything because my gun i have i can adjust the strength on that so just a squiggly line down the middle there a quarter inch bead at minimum right you want a quarter inch bead at, at minimum uh i like you know there's a good half inch there right but uh nothing wrong with that i use a uh, gasket or caulking um the caulking is more for like i, I interior and i use the gasket on exterior walls right, let's see your first pause of the first pause um you're gonna see here these are the framing screws that we use this is these screws here are the are the screws that we use for light gauge steel stud framing this is my impact gun right here the hilti sid 4a22 um, I have videos on all my Hilti tools and stuff like that. You can check for my Hilti playlist. I can even link that somewhere along the video as well. Uh, but this here is a number two, uh, number two Phillips. Okay, number two Phillips bit. And this is a magnetic shaft, okay? Magnetic. So you definitely want to make sure that your shaft is magnetic, okay? Um, and I like these little stubby ones. These uh, They're from Made by Hilti. These ones are a little shorter. I like those ones the best. But yeah, number two, Phillips is what we use for everything in drywall, okay? We do not use Robinson, Robinson or anything else, just Phillips, number two, for drywall screws and all our framing screws. Um, all right, so then you can, you'll see my drywall gun here. Let me just play. Let me just play it. <clears throat> There's the framing screws right there. That's uh, that's what we use, the little black pointy screws for light gauge. There's different screws for heavy gauge. So um, if you're going to 20 gauge or heavier, then use the self-drilling, the self-tappers, okay? These are for 25 gauge steel. And there you go. See, uh, I want to just point out uh, two things here. The, the tabs here, the green tabs... Sorry, these green tabs are for my 351, and these are the tabs that you we use for shooting the steel to steel. Okay, so you're shooting our studs to this to like columns or like I beams or whatnot. This is the the type of tab. So you use the black ones are for concrete, and these uh, clear ones they're shorter, and the black and the black ones for concrete are longer. And then this is my drywall gun right there. Okay, so you kind of you definitely don't want to use your impact gun for drywall. All right, you want to have um, a nice countersunk screws, right? And you don't want to break the paper. All right, now this little trick here I'm going to show you is we got a little bump, a bubble in the in the concrete there. So I'm just going to cut it on both sides and push it down so that the track goes in. That's pretty straightforward, okay? So as simple as that, okay? I'm just just clipping the two tabs and pushing it down, and then I'll shoot it in with my uh, with my um, with my shotgun, right? My Hilti gun, my powder my powder actuated uh, fastening tool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is what you do. You want your track flat on the ground. You don't want any bubbles between the uh, the your track and the uh, the concrete. You want you want it to be as tight as possible here because the shots they're not going to shoot. They're not going to get. They're not going to you know go in when there's bubbles. Okay, there's, that's going to give you issues. <coughs> so uh, simple tabs, uh, cut both sides and push it in. And there you go. You're good to go. So yeah, make sure your track is nice and flat. We got it. We got the caulking on. So it's about time we're going to start shooting it in, right? Uh, so just be careful with the with the with that black caulking. It doesn't come off. All right, it doesn't come off. So you can notice that I actually put enough caulking on it so that the that the end here okay this will will caulking will be on top here so it's going to overlap so there will be a continuous bead of caulking all the way around okay that's the point of this is to seal it in um, from any kind of like water and stuff like that so um, just yeah do a good job on the caulking don't make sure there's no gaps on it and you got a good quarter inch at least 
Um, I shouldn't have to show you guys how to cut the tube, but uh, uh, there is a couple tricks with those tubes. Oh, uh, the, the noise there just threw me off. All right, so you're going to hear, uh, you're going to see me shooting down. Uh, I'm going to be, you're going to actually hear the shots going off uh, in the video. So just uh, prepare yourself. So I start always in the corners, always start in the corner. I'm going to shoot in uh, one, one shot here so that I can move this end if I need be. Okay, so I'll go end to end, end to end. The, this track does not warp in the middle. Okay, it's going to be straight. So you go end to end, and then you shoot your, then you go shoot, boom, boom, like every 16 inches. Okay, um, if it's wider, like six inch track, say, then put, uh, then stagger your, stagger your, um, your shots. Okay, you're going to put two in six inch track, two on the end, and then you're going to go boom, 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 boom. You see what I'm, you see the green dots there. Right, and then two in the ends. That's for six inch. Uh, you can still stagger it for three and five eighths for sure. Um, it's just not that necessary. And um, if if anything, add some pin bolts to your uh, to your track. Okay, pin bolts are are pretty easy. You just hammer drill them in quarter inch, and boom, there you go. <clears throat> you gotta have that gun square, right? It won't uh, go. You gotta have it nice and square to the ground. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to use hearing protection as well. But yeah, I go pretty close. I go 16 inches apart and uh, down the middle and green 5 eighths. And it's uh, pretty straightforward. All right, and then I go jump to the other end of that track and start following back. And then I'm going to jump to the to the end to the far end of the this track down here okay i, I jumped because this uh this this end down here is already done so i just jumped here i'm going to hammer down there and then i'm going to jump down to this end and then hammer back that way um just uh just so you know there's kind of a routine right so you want to make sure your all of your tracks are on it's kind of nice too the caulking actually kind of holds it in place a bit for you right so these are pretty easy to load these guns uh you just you when you're empty you, you put your shots in the pins in and then you put your shots in okay and it says click yeah, click click and you're ready to go type thing the 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 cartridges the 351 like the cartridges there for the strips are pretty handy they get jammed up a lot but i keep my gun really clean so it gives doesn't give me a hard time but there you go you can see how they look right you want to make sure that they are sunk there's no flex in your track right on so uh, the doors, I obviously you stop at the doors there. Um, not going to get into framing the doors too much, but I do have an entire series on doors, guys. How to how to frame the the boards and everything like that. You can see now, like the where I'm leaving the holes for the like the slots, okay, for the drywall, right? I'm always cutting back my um, my steel here, okay, so that the drywall can go in nicely then you're gonna have um you're gonna have your one stud here your corner stud and then you have a floater stud here okay this is way out but you're gonna screw through the you're gonna you're gonna screw through the drywall sorry this way right to this floater stud to lock it in right um that's how that works so then the drywall here will be sandwiched in between the two pieces that's uh that's what you're after here Okay, um, so yeah, let's just leave your track on the bottom and top uh, cut back so that you can slip in your drywall. Boom, bada bing. So yeah, here uh, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about layout. Um, just like I showed you there, the, that sheet of drywall is going to go right into the, like, into the track here. Uh, so you see my tape measure where it is. It's in, it's at the very end, and I'm coming out 16, 32, 48, right every 16 inches. Okay, from there, that's where I'm marking my centers. So I want to mark my centers um, all the way um, on the bottom as I'm going. And uh, you know, I just sorry before I put the tops on. You want to make sure you're doing your uh, centers. You're marking that on the bottom track so that you can laser them up to the top. Okay, when you're when you're doing your top tracks, we're doing our top track here next. Just make sure that uh, you know how to do your layout. Um, on the from here, you see I'm coming from the, this side of the track out 16, 32, 48, and I know it's 5 8 drywall. Okay, it's 5 8 drywall. So when I come out this way, 
doing my centers down this way, I'm going to go to 16, 5, 8, okay, to my first center, okay? So you can mark 16, 5, 8, 32, 5, 8, 48, 5, 8 if you want, but just know your layouts, okay? So you got to know what size of drywall is going on the wall. Um, if you're going into concrete or if you're going into uh, some other sort of steel, make sure you come a quarter inch off of that steel, to your first center because you want you need to have caulking in that joint right so you make sure you and uh, you know what's going on for your layout now we're into these are the the uh the end wall studs okay so now that we have our bottom track shot down we have it's all our top track is cut Right. And like I said, if you missed how to do that part, they just watch the video before this. I'm going to show you that'll show you how to do all the fishtails and um, other little tiny tricks for laying the top track out and the bottom track for that matter. But uh, you want to get there. So these are the end wall studs. So now you have your bottom track on, you have your top track cut ready to go. You install your end wall studs. This one here is into cladding. So I'm just using the screws to screw it in. This one, I'm just staggering it. And every two feet usually on these is sufficient. All right, we're going to put up this first piece of top track. I have my pin laser in the corner pointing up the uh, where the where the wall has to end. So there's a there's kind of a, a system here that I follow. Okay, but here's my pin laser. It's it's going to point up obviously to that to this outside corner. Okay, this is the outside corner. Um, I'm going to put the top track in, clamp it, clamp it there, and then I'm going to check it out uh, right here. Okay, above me, because you can't see it, I'm just out of frame, but I'm checking right there to make sure that the wall isn't out too far. Okay, and if I or and if it is, then it's cool. I can just go ahead and screw it in on the other end and then cut it back, like trim it a little bit. If it is a little bit further over the line, it's usually only like a sixteenth or something. So I can just go ahead and screw it in the top screw the top track into the wall stud there. Um, and then just use my snips to snip that to end off at the uh, at the top there. Okay. It's pretty easy to do. Um, if you're, it, you're generally, uh, if you've done it right, it's probably pretty good. Okay. It's going to be pretty close. If, but if you want to know how to get those measurements, get sure to watch the, the video before, because that's going to show you what, uh, what's up there. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm plumbing up these first 16, the first center. All right. So it's pretty simple. I'm just putting my laser on the bottom track to, uh, to laser up the first center. Uh, and that, you know, it, it, and then I'm going to draw my centers across. I'll use my butterfly clip and then I'll draw my centers across the, the track. So I know where they are. The bottom, bottom centers are already laid out. So I don't have to do that. I just have to, to laser up the first center, uh, and, and then use my measuring tape to finish that off. Okay. So now here I can, you go. I can just, I can finish studying it out. These walls are um, get the first one screwed in and, and, and you know, secure. So you can get the top track in. Uh, this is less than a 10 foot section, right? So it's pretty easy to put in. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple, guys. Um, you'll see all the little tricks along the way. And uh, you're going to pick up a lot of stuff in these videos. This, this video series, guys, is full of information, okay? So if you've got to pay attention, ask questions. Make sure you're asking the questions down below in the comments because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to... You guys know I answer you all. I always answer your questions. So uh, check this out. A um, couple things here. Uh, I didn't show you guys exactly what I was doing for the brace here, but it's pretty easy. Okay, it's straightforward. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so this is this brace uh, here. Uh, um, just simply using a, a stud, a full stud. I didn't even cut it. All right, and I'm gonna screw it into the cladding down here. Okay, just two screws here. Um, I screw the the bend in. Okay, the uh, the bend. So two screws on the on the f uh, flange on the front of the stud so that it doesn't move uh, in and out when when it's uh, uh, acting as a brace, okay? Uh, so I'm going to plumb up the uh, line, this outside line. I'm going to plumb it up again, and I'm going to simply uh, move this track and clamp it to this brace when it's when it's pl when it's plumb, okay? When it's level. So um, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward that way okay so get the get to know the system of i'm doing all of this by myself right so you can do it too it's not uh it's not hard once you learn all these little tricks uh but yeah i'm screwing usually what i'm doing is i'm gonna i'm gonna screw upwards for these braces into into the 
you know, uh, through the track and up. Okay. Cause, uh, it's hard to screw down with the uh, lip in the way of the front of the stud there. So uh, I'm just going to screw up there. Just two screws, one here, one here, and then one there, one there, one here and one there. Okay. So you got, uh, six screws, six screws, in a brace, not, not very complicated. All right. And if you have questions about that, I have more examples coming ahead as well. So make sure to watch for those and uh, ask your questions. Uh, so layout here, I'm like I am going into a like I said, my next video, I'm going into uh, a lot of detail on how I lay out my corners, uh, how I'm going to show you guys how to frame them and drywall them the proper way and se sequence for corners. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you the inside and out of that. So you'll be a pro on that right here. What I'm doing is I'm just squaring all the studs or screwing them in on the centers and then I'm squaring them across. It's light gauge. So a lot of them, I got a clamp uh, with my baby clamps, which is fine. Okay, guys, make sure your studs are all square. Uh, it's makes it it's just so much nicer when you're drywalling. Cause if, if it, you know, your, 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 um, your bevels don't pop out or anything like that. So you want, you want to make sure your studs are square. Okay. Uh, now the other side of the, of this wall, okay. Um, is I'm, putting the end wall stud into an into a, a, a iron column. So same thing here, I'm going to clamp it because I'm going flush because what I want to do here is I want the 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 drywall to uh, finish straight across on this outside. Okay, and then it's going to butt into the iron on this side, but at least on the outside here, it's going to go straight into this cladding wall. All right. Um, they might need to bulkhead this out and around. Okay. But that would be, I don't know if they want that or not, but so far so good. I haven't heard anything about that, but if you do, I've done that tons. Okay. Then you just have to bulkhead out one side, right? You don't have to bulkhead out both sides. So make sure you move. If you run into a situation like this, don't go to center of column, right? Move it so that, and, and don't, don't, don't worry so much something about the princes a lot, a lot of the times. So, okay. And let, be, be smart about it. But, um, you know, move it so that one side passes by, all right? And you don't have to, um, you don't have to build a bulkhead on both sides, just the one, okay? Um, and then there we go. There's our shots again, the green tabs and the, the little little what, clear tab there, those are the ones for the steel. Wear ear protection. I'm wearing earplugs here. Yeah, yeah, one in the bottom, okay? Check it, make sure it's good to go. Um, and then, yeah, every two feet. Every two feet, you can um, uh, you put one in, and I and, and make sure too when you're shooting these in that you're um, you're being careful because the 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 middle of the of this column is so hard, right? You it, it's actually the softer to the outside, um, so softer to the outside. But you don't want to be too off center. But yeah, watch out for that, okay? Because if you shoot in the middle of this you're not gonna sink your shot because it, it's very hard there, okay? Cause that's where the, the structure is in it. So yeah, towards the lip, the outside of the beam is where the soft spot is, where you wanna be. And uh, yeah, so same thing. See, clamp it, right? I already have a stud waiting, ready to go there to hold it up so that I can clamp the one side in. Uh, I got my pin laser there at the bottom so some, same thing as last there I'm checking to make sure that um, that it's not past the line okay and uh, or if it's too far below the line I could pull it out okay so I see I check it it's good uh, make any adjustments and I'm screwing it in and um, it's just yeah it's that simple really uh, the wall the ones in the inside the walls are get a little more tricky um, be, I, I use fishtails instead of an end, like the end wall stud there I use fishtails you just slip it in and I have a stud waiting just like you see here uh, but yeah you'll see that here right away in a second here I'm gonna show you that and then yeah once I got screwed in I'm drawing my centers again um, I I would see where you can I plumb up the center and the track at the same time sometimes right so that I can get kill two birds with one stone type thing uh, there's a couple of details you definitely don't want to miss here guys that I'm going to be co covering uh, a little bit later in this video on these corners and door studs and things like that okay so make sure you guys keep watching now I'm going to stud it out just like I did before um, then I'm going to brace it and that's that's that right um, get the get that 
routine in, right? Get the routine in. Um, and of course, these are all 10 foot studs, okay? These are just floating walls. I don't have to cut the height, right? I'm just using straight up 10 foot studs all the way around. Um, and then, yeah, make sure that you're just adjusting it to whatever you need to do. That's braced. Um, same thing, right? Just you screw it, screw it to the, the cladding and then just pl uh, laser up level of the wall and there you go. So I'm just running this piece of track over here to catch this corner and then same thing, okay? Like I, I have a laser here um, uh, plumbing up that uh, that outside corner and uh, yeah, you just, that's how you do it, right? You just use clamps, clamp them, um, you know, you can move them in and out, clamp them, make sure everything's screwed together and not moving it at all. Okay, so once you get that first top track in, right, it's uh, pretty easy to go. Now, plumbing up the door studs, like, I, like I'm going to give you this one tip for uh, laying out your doors. Just plumb up one side and measure the top over with your, with your tape and you're good to go, okay? Um, and I always always mark it out on the outside. So here you go. I'm using a fishtail. I got a fishtail on the end that I'm putting in right now. There is a fishtail on that. Um, so it's sliding in, but two inches in. And that's going to hold that. And I always have the stud waiting to go there, right? Uh, so same thing. Pull out your clamp. Pull out your clamp, clamp it, and move. get down there and um, screw it in, right? Get it screwed in, and then you stud it out. Simple as that, man. Simple as that. Just follow the, it's the same simple routine. Um, use your braces. Use lots of braces. Uh, I'm building a ceiling in here, okay, before I drywall it even. So, or wait, no, actually, I, I think I built the ceiling after I drywalled it. Yeah, I did on this one. Uh, but anyways, I am building a ceiling in these rooms as well. Uh, it turned out so strong, so amazing. Um, but yeah, I like to use my big open, like they're all big, like, C clamp there. I love that light. It's like a light. Uh, it's got a nice reach on that clamp there. But again, so I'm plumbing up the first center on that, and I'm killing two birds with one stone because I'm plumbing up the first, like that center on the end of the track there, and I'm plumbing up the level line so that uh, when I brace it, it's good to go. Okay, so hold up here. Uh, this is a corner, right? And our corners overlap. On the one one end, uh, I have a fishtail. And on the this end, it's just the same thing as the bottom, okay? This corner here, I'm cut back, you know, three quarters of an inch. I'm cut back here so that the drywall can, can slide in all the way to this back corner. So same thing on the bottom, right? And then the track overlaps to the far edge of the adjacent wall here so that it's, it's strong, okay? Because I'm not going to put screws in. You're going to see that in a second. Um, and uh, this is the end stud here, okay? This end stud here, you always screw in one here and then one on this side side okay um but yeah that's this is how the, this layout goes right you'll see here in a second but make sure you're always bracing everything along the way i kind of tend to um, you know brace every 10 15 feet right um these sections here i brace every section but there's a fishtail you can see how i got that set up it's simply it's just you know we're, we're cutting the track splitting this one side right down the middle two inches in and then so I can slip it over this track okay so one two okay that's how that that is working so and then you can see how far out I braced it to the end right this brace is farther out to the end of this 10 foot piece because I have a brace on the on the corner there um and and yeah this one is also um back to the cladding not to the other um studs and then yeah so there is the screw pattern uh you got one here um i uh i generally i, I generally don't put two screws in here i i actually put always i kind of put one here and one here uh that's that's just how i do it um I, I don't know what i was doing here honestly but normally i, I would put it in on this side uh you can do this way but it you know it's just this way if you put it in this side then it, it's attached to both tracks right so i i um i don't know if i have a screw over there or not but i should right and then yeah just the two brace two screws in the braces uh as far out as you can so yeah we're screwing downward at all these joints here and the corners okay we're all screwing down but these braces we're screwing upwards right so we need to make sure to 
to remove them before you drywall it all and, and the ceilings in, you got to make sure you're removing the braces as you go. Right. But yeah, lots of bracing in there. Good bracing. Um, there you go. See screwing upwards on those. Uh, and, and yeah, as far as away from either end as you can. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's just how that goes. See, those are funky braces. I, I did that to show you guys that you can go run braces from braces so that you, um, um, there's the fishtails, right? That, you know, just so you guys know that you can do that. You know, you always, always have to go back to some structure um, and you can use track or stud. It doesn't really matter. Okay, there's a screw on this side here and then a screw on this side there. That's how I normally do it. Um, but yeah, the, I have also installed the floater studs on this side, all right, uh, because there's no door yet going in on this corner. Uh, you'll see here, I, I, and then yeah, just make sure you stud around everything, okay, so that you have backing for the drywall, okay? That's, all, that's my point with that. And you can see a close-up here of how the drywall is going to finish into the cladding on this side, right? And then if they want, they could bulkhead the inside of the wall there. Bracing. You want to make sure that your joints are always staggered, your drywall joints, uh, for, for strength, okay? You want to make sure that you're staggering both sides of the wall, of every wall. Uh, you never want to land, land your joints on the same size. You can see the ceiling is a little... You guys, wait till you see the ceiling in here. <laughs> so, yeah, you see the screws in the, in the stud, right? I do this for the stud. And the and the track, okay. We screw this stud in here, and then we put uh, two uh, two screws in there. Uh, but I screw the top and bottoms here, so they don't move or wiggle out. And there's another close up of the brace, as you can see, right? So screwed in top and bottom, and into the cladding there. Just give you an idea of that. Here, I finally had the uh, the um, the door openings, right? I ended up. Uh, drywalling both sides and getting the ceilings framed to the end here because I didn't have the doors, right? So I finally got the proper opening sizes and everything like that. I uh, started framing them in, but yeah, guys. So you guys notice that I wait till after the the doors are in to frame the, uh, to put the floaters in on these corners on the on this side, right? It's really tight in here. It's really tight in, in this space. So I wait till after the door's in to put that floater in because I always screw my clips in through the stud this way. I never wrap the clips around the front of my studs ever. I always screw it in from uh, the, the inside of the stud. So I wait till the end to put the floaters in. And if you have to double stud the door frames, okay, you just wait till the door's in to put the second stud in. Simple as that. Um, and then make sure you don't, you insulate it, the inside too, if you need to as well, right? Make sure you're always checking to see if you have to insulate your uh, door studs, your door frames, okay? I'm gonna show you a couple of things, but I do have I do have video I will link here on door headers and that'll make you become a pro at door headers. I'll link it right now. But like I was showing you before, I use a line laser for absolutely everything almost sometimes, but I, I plumb up one side and measure across with the tape measure. Um, and, and once I also got my door, like I had, kind of, I made my openings 40 quarter and the doors came a little bit, uh, um, I wanted to extend the track a little bit. So I added another piece in here. Uh, so you can do that as well, but, uh, take note here. I do not screw in the bottom of my door studs yet. I leave the screws out of the bottom until the doors in. Okay. Because then if I'm putting the screw, if I'm screwing it in and, and I got to take the screw out, there's holes, right? There's all, there's, a, then, then I, there could possibly be a bunch of holes if you have to do it multiple times. Right. So I wait till I have the doors, everything's good to go. And then I screw in the door studs at the bottom there. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can see the door frame is in here. So now I have the floater installed and I don't screw the floater in. I leave it floating. That's why it's called a floater because the drywall is going to go in the space there in between. Uh, the drywall will come out to, um, the drywall is just going to come out right out to the edge here, this stud or just a little bit inside. And then this floater is going to push up against, and then we're going to screw it in the drywall through the drywall to the steel through this way. Okay, so you always, because you're always drywalling the inside corner first, right? Or the inside of your rooms first, okay? So that's the best practices right there. All right. Yeah, so leaving it floating, floater, floating. Pretty cool. 
Um, yeah, make sure you, lo- you know, just cut the top and bottom three quarters of an inch. You know, even for half inch, who cares, right? Just cut it three quarters of an inch all the time. You know, and then, yeah, that's where I get my measurement. I'm putting a piece in, all right? I'm going right to the edge to the to that drywall butt uh, bevel right there. Um, but, yeah, you can see the screws, the screwing, okay? Um, how I have it screwed in on, on both tracks, okay? Uh, this uh, this corner stud, this end stud here. Shoot. Okay, just remember that. I got a screw here and a screw there. And I do, don't screw in my, my floater yet. But... Um, yeah, just so you know, right? Okay, so be sure to ask any questions that you have down below in the comments because I will literally get back to everybody. Down below there, I'm going to be linking you guys to my Metal Stud Framing playlist. And above that, I will be linking the Metal Stud Framing layout video that I published right before this video. It'll make a lot more sense. So make sure you're subscribed and have that bell notification on so you get alerted when I up the, upload the rest of the videos in this series. Okay, guys, this is Chris. I'll see you in the next video.